This is lesson 15 and 16, and it's all about the Pythagorean theorem and how to apply it to situations. So let's get down the definition of the Pythagorean theorem. So with the, what the Pythagorean theorem is, it's just a principle of all right triangles. So essentially you can take one of the shorter sides of the right triangle, so just it doesn't matter which one, just one of the shorter sides, and we square it, then if we add it to the square of the other shorter side, then that together will add up to be the square of the longer side. So let me draw you a picture so you can see that. So all we're saying is that if I take the square of the length of this side, plus the square of the length of this side, it's going to add up to the square of the length of this longest side. And the longest side we call the hypotenuse. You don't need to know that at this level, but in high school they will expect that you know that. So the longest side is called the hypotenuse. Okay. Now there, of course, is an equation that goes along with this so that we can sum up all this long words in just a couple of things. So here's the equation. a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and that probably sounds familiar. So if we called this side a, and this side b, and then this side is c, c is always the longest side. Okay? So it's saying that we're going to take the shorter side and square it, the other shorter side and square it, and it's going to equal the longer side squared. So let's get down some of the rules that go along with this. So the first rule is that A and B have to be the shorter sides. If you get them mixed up and call this longest side A or B, it won't work. Okay? It doesn't matter if this side is A or this side is B and this side is A or this side is B, but that's just the general rule is that those two have to be A and B. Okay? Then of course the other rule is that C has to be the longest side, so let's get that down. So C has to be the longest side, it has to be the hypotenuse. If you label one of the other sides as C, this principle will not work. And then the very last rule is that this only works with right triangles. So it only works with right triangles. So if you try to use it on any other kind of triangle, it, it won't work. The numbers just won't come out right. So how can we use this? When are we going to use this? There's actually two things that we're going to be doing in this class. We're only going to be doing one this unit, and then we'll see the other one later on. So the first one is to find side lengths that we don't know of a triangle. So we can use it to find the missing side lengths of a triangle. So maybe we're given this side length and this side length, but we have to find this one. Or maybe we're given this one and this one, and we have to find this one. Because of this principle, we can do that. We can find it when there's just one missing side length. The other thing we can do is go the opposite way. So we can use given side lengths to prove that a triangle is a right triangle because this will hold up. And that second one, we won't see this unit, we'll see in a later unit. So let's now go ahead and try some examples. Okay, so here we have a triangle. We have a side is 3, a side is 4, and then side is unknown. And it's normally labeled as x or y or something, and you're trying to find x. So I wrote down some steps for us to follow going through this to try to find x. So to find a missing side length, first we need to write down our formula. So that formula from above. So let's do that. Okay, we've done step one. We have our formula. Step two says label the side lengths. And you're thinking, well, they already are labeled. But I mean by A, B, and C. Now remember, A and B can be either one. I like to call A the one that's the, normally the shortest length, but it really doesn't matter. So again, I put A here and B here. You could have A here and B here. It won't matter. All that matters is that C is the longest length. Okay. So that's number two. Three, plug in the numbers we know. So now we're going to take the A, B, and C from here and plug it into this equation. So my A was three, so that just goes in here. So now we have three squared. B was four, so plug it in, so it's four squared. And you could have left C as C, it doesn't really matter, or we could put it in as X, as long as there's that one unknown. Okay, so we just did step three, four, square the numbers. Alrighty, let's do that. 
All right, so we have that now. Things are looking a little bit more simple. Isolate the unknown. Well, x is actually already by itself. That will change later on in another example. But we already have x by itself. We don't have anything else going on except for the squaring, which we can't get rid of till the end. So that's actually already done for us. So step six, solve and simplify. Well, we need to combine these together to be able to decide what x is. So 9 plus 16 is 25. Now we're almost done. If you get 25 as your answer, always make sure that makes sense. Does that make sense that this length right here is 25? No, it really doesn't. So you need to look at this. We don't want x, or sorry, we don't want x squared. We want just regular x. And how do you get rid of squaring? You square root it. So what we need to do is we need to square root both sides. So if we square root both sides, square root of 25 is just 5, and you square root x squared, that just becomes regular x. So that side length is 5. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So we're all done. So that missing side length was 5. Let's try another example. All right, here in this example, we're not missing c. We're not missing the longest side. We're missing one of the shorter sides. And that will change things up a little bit, but not much. So let's still go through the steps. One. Write down our formula. All right, step two, label the side lengths. And once again, remember, A and B doesn't matter. It's only C that matters. So C has to be 13, has to be that longest side. I like to call A the shorter side, but it doesn't matter. 12 could be A and X could be B if you want. It won't actually change much. And then three, plug in the numbers we know. So A is X. B is 12, so that's 12 squared. C is 13, so that's 13 squared. Okay, so we just did three, now we need to do four. Square the numbers, alrighty? And if you're a little rusty on your squares, that's one of the reasons I gave you that chart, the multiplication chart, to go in your notebook because that shows you it has the, the squares highlighted. Um, or of course, you could always use your calculator. So 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169, and we don't know what x squared is because x can be anything, but we're closer. Next, number five says isolate the unknown. Well, we need x squared by itself, but we have 144 being added to it, so we need to undo adding 144. So undo adding, we subtract. So we're going to subtract 144 from both sides. Okay, so if we subtract 144 from 144, then of course that just goes away at zero. You could carry down the zero, but eh, there's no need to. 169 minus 144 is 25. You might be saying something similar to last time. Once again, we're back to x squared equal 25. But we can't leave 25 as our answer. That doesn't make sense that that sh little tiny side is 25 length. So we need to get rid of the fact that we have an x squared, but we want just x. So we need to square root both sides in order to get just x. So if we square root x squared, we get x. If we square root 25, we get 5. And does 5 make sense as our answer? Yeah, that little side length could be 5. So yeah, that does make sense. And so you can see that was a little bit different than before, because this time we were finding one of the missing shorter legs. But it still amounts to the same thing. Just we had to get rid of what was being added to x in the middle. That was pretty much the only step. All right, let's take a look at some examples of real life situations. Okay, so here we have a ladder being leaned up against a wall. And we're trying to find out how far away the ladder is from the wall. Now, this is the exact same thing we've been doing. We have a triangle. We have a right triangle. That's good where we have a missing side length, we have a hypotenuse, and we have one of the shorter sides. So we can just go through the normal steps we were doing before. So step one, write down the formula. Step two, label the side lengths. And once again, remember, A and B can be switched, so you can be calling the missing side B if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Then we take these numbers and plug them in.
And this hopefully it's looking similar to the last one because it's actually the same numbers. So we have a missing unknown, 12 squared, 13 squared. So now we need to just expand out those squares. Once again, we need to get a squared by itself, so we're going to get rid of adding 144 by subtracting. So once again, we have the missing side length squared equals 25. But we want regular a, not a squared, so we square root both sides. And we get that a equals 5 once again. And that answer does make sense in this context. Okay? So you can see it was the exact same math as before, just the appearance of the problem might be a little bit different. Let's try another one. Here we have a tree and its shadow. Okay? So we're trying to figure out the length, the height of the tree based upon it, the length of its shadow. And people actually really do this. There are trees that are way too tall to climb, and so we can actually just use the math instead to figure out the, the height of the tree based on its shadow and based of the um, angle which the sun's coming at it. So this is real math that people use. So here, again, we just have a right triangle. The appearance is different, but we just have a regular right triangle. We have one side length, a missing side length, and then we have the longest side length. So we're just going to go through the regular steps as before. So first step, write down the formula. Then step two, we need to label the sides. I'm going to be calling the missing one A, but you can call it B. Then we just take these numbers and throw them into the equation. All right. So now we have those numbers in, and now we need to square them. Now this is why it's really good for you to have a calculator or use the one that's on your computer, because as you get higher in math, the numbers are going to get worse and worse looking. This isn't elementary school anymore. They're not always going to be nice round numbers. We are going to be seeing decimals and even fractions. So we need to do 6.2 squared and 7.5 squared. All right, 6.2 squared is 38.44, 7.5 squared is 56.25, okay? So now we need to subtract our 38.44 to undo the fact that it's adding to a squared. And we get a 17.81, but we're not done yet. We have a squared, we want regular a, so we need to square root both sides. Now, you get a kind of nasty decimal, so we can leave it as 4.22, approximately, okay? Um, if you don't have a calculator, you could have left it as a square root of 17.81. Um, it's actually technically a more complete answer because we, we're not rounding it, but you're fine um, going to rounding it to 4.22. In high school, they'll normally ask you in the instructions specifically to either be rounding to a certain amount or to leave it as the square root. Okay? But here we have the answer is the height of this tree was 4.22 meters. And that's actually pretty tall. So it's good that they would use the shadow instead of having to climb that entire length and measure it. Okay? So here we have a box. We're trying to find the diagonal. And it really is just the normal thing that we've been doing. You can almost just erase these other lines and we're back to our, um, our triangle as before. So we're going to do everything the same, and I'm going to go through it rather fast. So we're going to start with writing the formula. We then need to label the sides. We then take those numbers and throw it into the equation. And now we'll have to square those numbers. So since these are bigger numbers, you're probably going to want to use a calculator. Now that we have them squared, we need to add these together to get to C squared. So we need to do our 324 plus 1296. All right, we're very close. We have 1620 equals C squared, but we don't want C squared, we want just regular C. So we need to square root both sides. So once again, you could either leave it as C equals the square root of 1620, because it's, it's actually more um, correct, or you could round it out to 40.25. And again, in high school, they'll tell you specifically in the instructions which way they want the answer, okay? 
But for us, you could leave it as either one. It might be better for you to go to 40.25. That way, you can look at the actual problem we're doing and see if it makes sense. Because we all understand what 40 is, but we don't all know what the square root of 1620 is. So you might want to actually go to 40 so you can see, oh yeah, that does make sense as that being the missing side. And that's all that we're doing for this lesson.